Here we go. I wonder where you are, what part of the globe you're in. In one space, it's about 1247 a.m., but where you are, it may be early in the morning or in the afternoon. Either way, thank you for tuning in to Real Talk with Yadida. Did you see the topic for today, tonight? I don't know. Did you see that topic? I can't even go to sleep. I um, This has been a week where I've really been um, just praying and not just praying, but kind of weeping in prayer, um, crying in prayer. When you're an intercessor, you know, you kind of feel things deep on the inside in your heart uh, for people, for communities and nation, what have you. And uh, you feel it. It can be very, very um, emotional at times as you take the burden kind of to God and say, Lord, please have mercy. Right. And so the topic for today, you know, I've been kind of sitting here and this week and, and even I know I talked before about the topic of children being seen and not heard. Right. Seen and not heard. And I wanted to go a little further with that uh, because, you know, today or this morning, I'm realizing that it actually um, has caused like a greater impact than I think we actually imagine or what we really think. I think it's gone a little further than just children. Oh, that's easy. You know, just tell the children to go in the other room. I mean, that's how I grew up. I don't know about you, but when we had company, we knew that the children were in the back room and the grown-ups were um, up in the front room listening to their music and, you know, um, having a good old time. And us kids were in the back playing and sometimes fighting <laughs> or what have you. But we knew the drill, right? We knew what the drill was, you know. But I, I honestly believe that 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 concept that way of living, that way of being taught could have been done differently. And the reason I say that is because, yes, sometimes I get it. You know, grownups, I I get it. Sometimes we need a moment to kind of breathe and, you know, regain some strength. And when my daughter was a little girl, I spent a lot of times, I didn't do too much baby talk. I kind of just talked to her, you know, mommy loves you and stuff like that. You know, I didn't do too much goo goo gaga, and I don't think I I ever did. Um, But I did that for so long that I appreciated it when I had an opportunity to talk to a grown up, right? And that that may have, um, those conversations I would say were not quite lengthy in the beginning because children do require our attention and a, a great deal of our attention. And so, you know, it's it, some for some of us, it probably was years, um, depending on your support level or your family structure. But, you know, maybe if you were a single mom, a solo parent, you may have spent a lot of time with your little one. Um, and then as they start to get a little older, you may or may not have company or may feel like, hey, now I can finally go out or whatever it is. Uh, but back in the day, I want to talk a little bit about that because, yes, when fin- uh, company, I would say, uh, finally came over and the kids went in the back and we were told, you know, go in the back. But then there were other times when company came over and maybe it was one or two people. And, uh, you know, why in the world? I'm trying to think, why did that generation say that to us? And I think. Is for a couple of reasons, because, you know, children, children are very honest, right? They don't really have what you call, um, what's the word I'm looking for at this hour in the morning? Like they don't have a filter. A child will say whatever comes to their mind. And who knows, maybe our parents or whomever caregivers um, didn't want to get embarrassed. Let me give you an example. For instance, uh, before the company comes you know, a parent or whomever is cooking in the kitchen and you know that there is not enough food for company and you know that there's a strong possibility that company is going to eat first in in some cases and then the children eat last and in other cases like children eat first and um, the grown-ups eat last. But if you were in a household 
I don't know. Like, I don't want to say they were trying to keep up with the Joneses, whoever the Joneses were, but maybe they didn't want to be embarrassed. And, you know, a child, uh, the company would come over if they didn't tell you to go in the back room. You could very easily uh, when they come and you see them piling up their plate, you know, you didn't eat yet. You know, you're hungry. And you really wanted to say, Mama, I'm hungry. We didn't eat yet. If they eat it all, then we're not going to have anything left. All right. Could you imagine a child coming out and saying that? Now, back in the day, a little different from nowadays, um, that would have caused a child to get a pop in the mouth, right? Right in the teeth, right in the mouth. Uh, and then they would be sent to the back room. So I think instead of that happening, maybe they didn't want to go through that. And they just said, just go to the back room. You know, I'll bring your food in the back. And after they ate the good food, you probably got a sandwich or something like that. But anyway, maybe that was why uh, the embarrassment. But whatever it was, the thing about it, in many cases, it stemmed over into other areas. It wasn't just when company came over that you knew you were supposed to be seen and not heard, at least for a little while in the beginning. Um you know, before you were sent to the back, you got to say hello sometimes and sometimes you didn't. Right. You were already in the back. Um, but the thing about it was now when there were other situations that took place. Right. And so you saw in the topic, it, it could just stem and it has stemmed in many people's lives. And you may be the person I'm talking to um, early this morning where it went to different places of being seen and not heard and knowing that there were certain things you were not supposed to talk about. I realized that there were some adults who took advantage of that situation, um, who were supposed to be trusted individuals. And as it went to a child who was able to speak and it became, don't say that you're a child, you're supposed to don't say that, right? Be silent. Um, this is our little secret. And so that very same concept sometimes regretfully stemmed into children being molested and being seen and not heard um, at the point where they were like, well, I know I'm not supposed to say certain things. It's going to get me in trouble. And there were people who played on that in many of our lives. Um, if I was to give a, a tally or something, you know, you, you, you've heard about the different movements that are out there. And even in that, some people say, well, why do they have to come up with that Me Too movement? And I think it's just because sometimes people just need a voice to be able to, um, I don't know, talk about or give voice to the spaces where they couldn't give voice to as a child. People have grown up into their adulthood holding on to deep secrets, secrets that they never should have had to keep a secret, but because of the way they were raised and the different things that were put in place, uh, children grew up into adults. They went through childhood, um, going through, like I said, being molested, sometimes being bullied um, and by children and even adults. And not really saying anything because of these restrictions and boundaries, which in the truth of the matter had a little bit of um, almost and I don't, you know, not 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 to judge anyone, but the connotation sometimes was warped. It was a sick, warped um, point of view that sometimes the people who said it to the children had it said to them. And so this went on for generation after generation after generation of people saying, oh, this is what we're supposed to say. This is what my grandmother said. This is what my great grandmother said. We knew we had to go to the back room. And then, you know, you probably said, well, when I have children, I'm not going to send them to the back room. And then they ended up sending them to the back room in the next generation, uh, even though they said they wouldn't do it because of frustration sometimes or needing a break and wanting the kids to be silent because of just being tired and needing a break. What happened to that thing called? What's that thing? Where's the village? We, it take, what is it? It takes a village to raise a child 
what happened to the village? Was that village just in Africa? Was that village just somewhere else? What happened to that, right? Children, um, they weren't brought into this world, um, how can I put it, alone or by themselves. So we wonder about that when we see people uh, when I look in, in the news, um, which I try not to look at too often to tell you the truth, but when something pops up and I see a woman who has gone over the edge regretfully or a man who's gone over the edge because they have tried it and they're just like, you hear, you know, in the tabloid, they, they say, well, the last thing they may have said was, I'm just so tired. I've just had enough. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Where's the village? What happened to the people? And I hear the word tribe being thrown around all over the place nowadays. I just say, what happened to the support? Now, let's talk about that, too, because back in the day also, I understand that there were things that the family, they didn't want people to know that they needed support. That was the other thing. Like, don't tell anybody that, you know, we, we don't have money for food or the refrigerator's bare or we're on our last carton of milk. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that, you know, mommy and daddy are not getting along or we're going through a divorce or whatever it was. Don't tell anybody. That don't tell anybody thing has gotten so many people um in such sad and bad ways, I, I'm, and even in trouble, um, all kinds of things because of the silence. What is this thing about the silence? Yes, I understand sometimes. It's, it's, and, and people will say, oh, keep it to yourself, right? Keep it to yourself. But when you are at your wit's end and you feel like you can't take it anymore and you're all by yourself and all you're hearing in your mind is keep it to yourself keep it to yourself i know not that i think i know that that is not the best thing we have all kinds of people family members church uh people on your pew people down the row people on your job who have felt that they needed to keep silent. And then all of a sudden, you find out that, that these people sometimes just blow. Like that that soda that's shaken up a little bit too long and you take the lid off and it just explodes, right? Because people get to the point where they've had so much that they've been holding in and they feel that they can't talk about it and they can't share it and they can't tell it. So they try to handle it on their own. And um, it doesn't work out very well sometimes. Then we have the situation where people go through the childhood, right? They go through being in the back room, being told this is our little secret, sometimes going through molestation, getting into their teens, I'm going through teenage pregnancy. And once again, I'm going to keep silent. I can't tell anyone about this because um, what the response is going to be. That's why we like to keep silent. We're very concerned about the response of people who don't know how to handle our pain who don't know how to handle our dark secrets, our secrets and our pain, which causes us great shame. But there's someone out there, nine times out of ten, this is the truth, who has gone through the very same thing or who has an answer. That's the other thing. The other silence is, well, I went through that and I don't want anybody to know. So now I'm going to be silent because they might ridicule or judge me because of what I've been through. That's the other thing. And that's not good either because people need to hear other people's story. You know, it amazes me when I, there are so many people who have been through and are going through the same things. Um, and if somebody would just share, someone else might not feel like they're so off. People feel like they're off because they're like, well, I'm the only one going through this. Nobody else is. It's got to be me. I must be the bad person. 
the bad seed. Like there, there is no bad seed, right? That kind of stuff, excuse me, is just not, um, no, right? 